Are we live? Oh yeah, we're live. <laughs> so, hey Lindsay. Hey, Hi. Peter. So, I, I I started speaking to uh, to Lindsay um, right before the, uh, kind of everything started to really happen uh, with the coronavirus, and I think that you know the idea of virtual uh, and virtual appointments um, is a great idea. It's an additional pillar, and there are a number of reps who before this, like I, for example. Um, you know, I've been doing this for a while, but I've sold about 20K in virtuals over the years. I did a virtual appointment this year uh, in February, sold a homemaker yeah. plus eight to somebody awesome. in California, where you are. Oh yes, my actually, about oh, two cool. and a half hours for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rex. You know, so this is, I know, sorry. Um, so this is, a, this is a great tool anytime, and there are a lot of reps who have utilized this, uh, reps like yourself, but right now, um, this is a, a, will be, if it isn't already a pillar of people's business for the coming months. Sure. And it was a pillar of your business. Yeah. When you were a rep. So I'm just excited to talk to you. I'll, I'll Thank tell you. people a little bit about you and then mostly I'll, I'll, I'll probably, you know, ask some questions, uh, and, and you, you'll probably do more talking than I will, but I'll, I'll share a couple of things as we go on. But uh, awesome. first, thank you for your time in advance. And Thank you awesome. for having me. All I right. It. Thank you. Yes, it's, 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 it's my pleasure. I know people are going to benefit from your, your wisdom and, and ideas and, and energy. Thank you. Well, thank you for putting this together. This is a great idea. I think we can help a lot of people. Awesome. I, I, I'm glad. I'm glad. So Lindsay Hatcher is from Bethesda, Maryland. Uh, she now lives in Hollywood, California, beautiful Hollywood, California, with Jake Zimmerman, <laughs> CSP. Yeah. Uh, may, you know, uh, she was with Cutco for five years. She started in Gainesville, Florida uh, as a sales rep, and then she was a DM in Florida. Um, and she was, in uh, 2013 and 2014, a pioneer of this program. She was one of the top virtual reps in the country, uh, selling over uh, 23K, uh, working part-time. I was a sales rep in, uh, in 13 and 14. Uh, she used her Cutco Vector experience to get a job working in sales with iHeart Media in LA. And she now creates marketing campaigns for a living. So I'm sure she has some great ideas for us. And she sells to CEOs and CMOs. And she actually wrote a virtual manual, which uh, old school I actually I have it right here. This is your virtual manual. Awesome. Oh, sweet. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, uh, and she's been teaching it to different regions across the country, especially lately. So um, we're very, I'm just very excited to have you and appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks for the, the warm intro. That was awesome. <laughs> awesome. It's been really fun getting to know you. you. Everyone watching this will and hearing this will see what, uh, you know, truly uh, the sun in LA has got nothing on you, Lindsay Hatcher. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate it. Seriously. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So let, let's, let's, let's dive in. Um, cool. We're going to go into the nuts and bolts of how you do things. Uh, my first question though is, especially uh, back then in, in 13, 14, what made you decide to get into virtuals? Why'd you do it? For sure. Um, so I, I was, I was kind of forced into it. When I started with Cutco, um, I was 19, yeah, I think I was 19, a sophomore in college at the University of Florida, go Gators, a, and uh, I didn't have a car, and not only did I not have a car, but I didn't have a license at the time, so even if I wanted to drive, I couldn't, and I, being originally from right outside D.C., all of my initial contacts were in um, our tri-state area, the D.C., Maryland, Virginia area. And um, so, but when I started with Cutco, my previous jobs were just jobs here and there. And I was looking for income. This was going into a summer. I think I started around April um, that year. And a friend, I was actually a PR, a friend recommended me to Cutco. And I was like, sure, I'll try it. And I was studying advertising at the time. That's what I got my degree in. So I knew I wanted something that would give me some kind of sales or marketing experience. Um, the company's name was Vector Marketing. So I was like, this is perfect. And uh, what's funny is they had actually pretty much just launched the virtual demo in my office in Gainesville, Florida. 
um, Janine Grant was running it at the time. She's a good friend of mine. Uh, she was the DM and her office was one of the, the first test offices for the virtual. Um, so they really just kind of created it and um, it was an even more basic version of viewcutco.com than what they're using now. The one they're using now is awesome and is cookware. Um, it, yeah, cookware, cookware demonstration videos, um, a few more slides on accessories. It's much more advanced than the one we were using. But I, um, so I was kind of one of the first test kids with the virtual and we didn't really have any kind of virtual manual or virtual program it was just like just learn how to do the demo and just do it online and over the phone instead of in person so um so when i first started i had created that initial list my first few days of training of like 100 or 200 people that i could possibly show cut code to but they were all in dc maryland virginia and i was not going to be going home over the summer i was going to be just living at school um, through that summer, I think I had like a summer class or two that I was taking then. And uh, so that's really how I got started. I, I didn't have any other way to sell Cutco. And um, we can we can kind of talk about this when we go over recommendations probably a little bit later. But I was actually through virtuals able to get um, more recommendations in my hometown, not just across the country, but in my hometown so that when I did go back over winter break and spring break, et cetera, I could then do lives um, and get practice doing lives for the first time after doing um, a couple semesters of just straight virtuals. So, so that's kind of, that's how I got started. Amazing. So what's really cool about this is that especially yeah. for new reps who are looking at this, who their option is virtuals. Anybody who's, who's a new rep right now, that's yeah. what they're doing. They're doing virtual appointments. And that's how you started. You started ex basically exclusively on virtuals. So exactly. that's very, uh, very relatable, very relatable. All right, cool. So um, I guess, you know, I know that different people will do virtuals in different ways. There will some be some people who will use uh, the new uh, or reasonably new, uh, uh, wonderful stuff that Mike Monroe has created and shared. People who may use the Prezi, which is what you did. Uh, then there will be people who may use, uh, you know, cutco.com or their rep portal. And there may be people who, you know, like come in the studio and <laughs> like I'm For doing sure. here a little bit and, uh, and do, do virtuals that way. But I think the key is, and I know you're going to share from your own experiences, which is awesome because uh, you have so many and you've sold a lot uh, in this way. But I think the key is for anybody, you know, hearing this, that uh, the, con the key concepts that you're going to share are relevant and applicable to however, you know, we choose to do our virtuals. Um, sure. And so whenever we're doing anything, of course, it all starts on the phone. So, uh, you know, my, my question for you is, uh, you know, how you kind of planned your phone time, uh, uh, how you, uh, you know, what you said in your, uh, in your call, and what were the key things that really created and planted the seeds for success on the appointment uh, when you were setting up the appointment? Yeah. Um, so I have, I have, by the way, um, like a one liner for you. I don't have my full phone approach. I think honestly, um, kind of like you said, Cutco is a business where you can make the demo your own. You can, I mean, it's your own personal sales business. Um, and I know different parts of the country have their scripts that their offices use. So whatever you are comfortable with, whatever your office uses, use that script. And then just where you ask for the live appointment, this is where you'd flip to ask for the virtual appointment. Um, and I think right now, especially moving forward, we're obviously in a very interesting time, this coronavirus era. Um, I think it's important to um, obviously listen to your, your kind of state policies right now. And I know different states are, some are stay in place, work from home, and then some are still kind of business as usual. So um, I had on my last call, the reason why I bring this up, um, someone in, I think it was the Virginia division, was asking me, you know, do you ask for the live appointment right now and then switch it to a virtual? And I think that's up to your state policies right now. Um, if you were in California, you'd probably be asking for virtual appointments right now because we're all in kind of like a stay in place mandate for the next three, four weeks. And then once that opens back up and we're able to really um, go back out into the public, be walking into people's homes, you can start up kind of your live demos again. 
Um, but if you're in an area where it's business as usual, um, you can ask for the live appointment, right? And then if they say, hey, you know what, I'm just not really comfortable right now with people coming into my home with everything that's going on, or hey, I'm immunocompromised, or hey, my mother lives with us and she's older, so we just don't feel comfortable letting people in. Um, the reason why I say this is my grandmother lives in McLean, Virginia, and my mom has like sealed off her house. <laughs> no one is allowed in the house. My, my grandmother is fine. She has everything she needs. She's stocked up. Um, she can FaceTime us. Um, and she's able to live by herself, but my mom has kind of sealed her off from the public for the next month. So the reason, reason why I address this, I know different states are going through different things right now. Um, but I think the line where if someone says, hey, you know what, I'm just not comfortable with you coming in right now, um, you can say, hey, no problem at all. I completely understand. What's really cool is that I can actually um, continue working on my scholarship or my goal um, whatever your approach is, right? I can continue working on it virtually. We can just do it over the phone and online. It's super simple. Do you actually have access to just like a laptop and internet, right? And most people will say yes. Um, and then you say, okay, great. Well, actually what's super easy, um, it, what is your email address if you don't mind? I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and email you a link to the presentation. Um, you get their email address, you schedule a time with them, um, and do your firm up, right? Everybody should have a firm up on their, their phone approach um, to make sure it's a time where they have 45 minutes to an hour um, and they're not gonna be interrupted. The other thing I'll say too about virtuals, when scheduling a virtual, sometimes customers think that, oh, we can just do this on a computer or kind of over the phone and uh, I could probably just do this while I'm, at, while I'm sitting in an office, right? Um, or while I'm at work or on my lunch break for those who are still going to work right now. So um, you want to make sure that you're setting it up for a time that they are going to be at home. Um, and the reason why I know you've probably, I mean, so many reps hear this from their managers all the time, don't schedule it while they're in the office. But I'll tell you from experience, I now work in an office space. I can't imagine a Cutco kid calling me and me doing a, a virtual while I'm in my iHeart office. You just have so much going on. You have managers who come up to you every few hours or so needing something. You have clients calling you. When you're in the office, you're in that office mindset. You're not thinking about home. You're definitely not thinking about cooking or your kitchen. So just make sure you're setting it up for a time where they are gonna be home. Um, and ideally, of course, with their spouse. So you just kind of check with them. Hey, by the way, okay, I know you said Thursday at 6 p.m. works for you. Just want to make sure, um, is this an hour where you, you're going to be at home and it is, and assuming that you got their spouse's info when you were um, qualifying recs, like before you called them, um, you can go ahead and ask, oh, hey, is your husband Jim, um, is he going to be available at that time too? And if they say, oh no, he doesn't get home till eight o'clock, be like, okay, oh, do you mind um, if we go ahead and just move it to a time where you're both together, it makes it easier. And I actually um, am, am able to, whether it's get credit for my scholarship that way, or it's work on my goal that way, whatever your approach is. I know some kids are still in school and then some are, this is your career. So, um, and then you go ahead and schedule it for a time where they're both gonna be together. Um, just wanna make sure you're at home and you have good internet. Okay, great. Um, thank you so much. I'm really looking forward to this. So I think leaving the call, you want to make sure like these three things. One, you've gotten their email address um, because you're going to send them a confirmation email, which I'll go over in just a moment. But two is that you've scheduled a time that they're at home. And of course, with their spouse is most ideal. And then um, three is that they have access to a laptop with internet. The one thing I'll say, I know, of course, tablets are huge now and are, are a common household item. I know when I was first doing virtuals a couple years ago, it wasn't as common, but you do wanna to try to stay away from an iPad as, as best as possible, just because if they have to use an iPad or tablet, they have to download the Prezi app. Um, and then sometimes they'll have to even log into their Apple IDs in order to do that. And it just, you don't wanna add, you don't wanna add room for any technical difficulties if you can help it. Um, so that, that's the actual phone approach and phone call for, um, I think from the phone to the appointment, what I always did is I would have my phone jam, let's say it's a Sunday night phone jam, right? From like five to 9 PM. 
Well, after the phone jam, not during the phone jam, but afterwards, I would then take like 10, 15 minutes and then send out the confirmation emails for each one of my virtual appointments. And in the how to rock the virtual virtual manual, I actually have um, an example of a confirmation email. I think it's on like the second to last page. Um, we're basically, here's just a, a quick example, but you always send them the email. Um, I send them an email that night, so after the phone jam, and then I usually send them a confirmation like the day before. If, if let's say you're setting up like a Thursday, Friday appointment, and there's a few days in between, I always send like a confirmation email like the night before the day of. But it can be along the lines of in the subject heading, you put our appointment, Cutco appointment Thursday at 8 p.m., right? And you put that in the subject heading. And then um, quick example of a confirmation email. Hey, Mrs. Jones, this is, of course, in the email. Thank you so much for setting up this appointment with me. My goal is to pay for school, hit this contest, et cetera. And in order to do that, I need to show a quick presentation to at least 15 people each week um, during this competition, contest period, et cetera. Thank you for getting me one step closer to being able to pay for my spring tuition or whatever your goal is, right? You always wanna remember you're thanking the customer every chance you get um, for helping you. So they know also the importance of this appointment. And then just a reminder, appointment will be tomorrow, Tuesday at 4.30. Just make sure you're by your phone and in front of a computer with internet access at that time, because every appointment is extremely important to hit my goal. In, um, yeah, to hit my goal. It's a lot of fun and doesn't take too much time. And I'm really excited to talk to you again. I really appreciate you taking you and your spouse and your husband, etc., cetera, um, for taking time out of your day to help me. We're going to have lots of fun. Thanks again. And then you put your name and then you can put like your phone number at the end. Um, so that's, that's the confirmation email. Um, that script is in the, the virtual manual. And you can honestly make it your own, but as long as you're thanking them and reminding them how important this one appointment is, because to them, you're just a, someone who's calling in to say, hey, um, I really like to spend some time with you, but they may not realize just how important it is over the phone. Um, so I always send that, yeah, at the end of the phone jam that night. Um, I think that was a really long answer to your question. I'm hoping I covered everything. So that so phone, right? Three keys, make sure that you always get their email address. You make sure that it's a time that they, them and their spouse are both gonna be available. And you also um, firm up that that's a time that they'll be at home, right? Um, and then you send the confirmation email the night of, uh, after the jam where you book the appointment. And then um, I usually send them like a confirmation either the night before or the day of, hey, I'm really excited to talk to you and your spouse, right? Um, for our 4.30 appointment today, we're gonna have lots of fun. Um, this is just a courtesy reminder. I'm gonna send you a link to the presentation um, right as we get started and I'll, call, I'll be sure to call you right at 4.30 or whatever the appointment time is. Thanks again. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Um, I think, uh... I think one thing uh, just to, to add on, uh, sure. and I, I'm curious about this with, with the firm up. I think yeah. right now there are a lot of people who are going to be home, but the distractions of children, uh, a lot of our customers have kids, which is great because they have to cook for their kids. Right. Um, but uh, I'm curious, right, if you have any thoughts about like I, two questions on this. One is, do you kind of give them some time frame for how long the appointment's going to take in that firm up? And then two, any thoughts on, uh, right now in terms of working with uh, the fact that they may have distractions that they don't normally have. Uh, you know, I saw a, a joke from someone who was like, yeah, I want to, you know, expel my kids from homeschool. Right. So yeah. <laughs> any thoughts on that? Liz? Sure. Um, so I think during the phone approach, yes. Um, one, it usually comes up as a question from the customer before you even get to it. Um, I think you've had experience with this before, but it's usually like, you ask for the appointment, they go, how long is it going to take before you even get to scheduling a time, right? Um, so I think that's when, that's one opportunity, obviously, to say, hey, you know, it's it's only going to take three days, but don't worry, I'll let you sleep during it. 
right? Or you, you have some kind of fun answer. Um, that would be my, my virtual um, version of that. Cause I know usually lives, it's like, Hey, it's, it's three days, but I'll bring my own sleeping bag. Right. So virtually, of course it's like, Hey, it's three days, but I'll let you sleep during it. Don't worry. Right. You have some fun with it. So they don't think an hour is a long time. Um, Cause I do want to address that mindset when you're setting up an in-person appointment, right? You could have like a friend come over for an hour and an hour is nothing, right? No, oh, they came over for only an hour, but a phone call for an hour sounds daunting, right? To a lot of people. Um, I know work conference calls are, can be 30 minutes to an hour. So um, in today's day and age, more so than it was like five, six years ago, um, people are doing more things virtually. So an hour is probably not as daunting as it was five years ago. But um, I think you do have to, like, whatever your joke is, your joke line, right? Hey, it's three days. Hey, it's two days. Like, hey, yeah, it's, it's a seven hour marathon. It'll be a lot of fun. Don't worry, right? Just kidding. It's only 45 minutes to an hour. We're gonna have a lot of fun. Um, you, I do know there are some reps who use the line that it's like, if you don't like what I have to say after 15 minutes, you can kick me off the phone. I wasn't a big fan of that line, but I know some people like to use that. Um, but you kind of set the expectation really high and then bring it down, back down to, hey, it's only 45 minutes to an hour. I just want to make sure um, it's so you said 430 works for you, 430 to 530. Does that work fast? Okay, perfect. Right. And you just kind of um, move past it. And then you can also say, I mean, in my confirmation email, I don't think I firmed up how long it was going to take, but I think that's an opportunity to. Um, and then I know you and I and Kadeem discussed this earlier this week, but you could also firm this up at the very beginning of the appointment and say, hey, Mrs. Jones, oh, thank you so much. How was your day? You're building rapport. I just want to make sure, what does the rest of your day look like, right? So you have her kind of walk you through, oh, well, I have to pick up the kids from soccer at this time. Well, I guess it's coronavirus era, so they're not doing much soccer right now. But, um, you know, you have her walk you through her day. So you kind of know what to expect and be like, okay, cool. So about 45 minutes to an hour. Okay, perfect. And if she says, Hey, you know what, actually, I'm so sorry. I completely forgot that my husband and I have to go to the grocery store before they run out of bread. Right. We have to go here. Um, I really only have 10 minutes right now. This is the opportunity where you say, Hey, okay, cool. Um, to make the best use of our time, let's just reschedule this. Does tomorrow morning work better for you? or tomorrow afternoon, right? And then you reschedule it right then. I think for distractions with kids, um, I think right now, I mean, everyone has everyone home. It's something you can't get around. And um, most homeowners do have some kind of like office space. Um, so here's, here's kind of what I think, because if I were a mom, I wouldn't want someone telling me, hey, maybe step away from your kids for 30 minutes to an hour because kids are kids and they need to be watched, right? So I, th I think you just kind of let it happen and understand that distractions might happen during the virtual. Um, and if it gets to be for whatever reason, so distracting that she just is constantly being needed, I would say, hey, Mrs. Jones, like I respect your time. Do you want to go ahead and if you don't mind, and if this is the first 15, 20 minutes of the virtual, say like, hey, if you don't mind, do you want to go ahead and reschedule this for, for a time that works better? Maybe a suggest later at night, right? After the kids have gone to bed or early in the morning, um, something along those lines. So I think distractions you're going to run into. Um, I personally, I, I mean, unless you want to suggest they go into like a home office um, where it's easier, you could do that. But I think it's something you just kind of have to work around right now, you know? Totally. Yeah. So, so, so sounds like, uh, you know, on the phone uh, when you're, when you're scheduling, just making sure that you, you know, have a good joke, make sure things are, are clear, uh, make sure, you know, maybe repeat again, just want to make sure that time does work for you. And, uh, you know, you will be in front of your computer and that kind of thing. Um, and then on the, on the appointment itself, just kind of reminding them that it will take as you're as you're starting, you know, thanking them. I love all the, the gratitude and the appreciation and tying back into your goals and what you're up to. And then just, you know, reminding them, uh, hey, uh, you know, something the effect of um, I just want to make sure the time does work for you. Um, you know, it'll take about 45 minutes to, you know, to an hour, that kind of thing. And, you know, my goal is to be like one of the highlights of your day or, you know, distraction. 
you know, whatever. That exactly. Kind of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. All right. And I actually, by awesome. the way, and I will um, say, yeah. please. Well, I was going to say um, what you said about being the highlight of your day. I do. I think I texted this to you um, yesterday, but I, uh, with everything that's going on right now, right? Obviously, emotions are high. There's a lot of uncertainty out there. Um, there's a lot of a lot of our co customers, these HM3s, these Mac customers, right? Um, a, I mean, I know everybody is affected by the coronavirus era that we're in right now, but there are going to be some industries and some job loss. I know my dad lost one of his jobs. He worked, he does graphics at the sports arena for the jumbotron um, in DC. And because there are no games, there's nothing going on at the arena. He doesn't have any, any work with that job right now um, and probably won't until May. So I do know, obviously, we have to remember that our customers, the people that we are sitting down with to do virtual presentations with, um, are, are going through a lot right now, or they might be at least. And so one line that um, when you're doing, when you're building rapport and just kind of opening the demo, right, and setting the tone for the demo, um, I came up with this and I can, I can text this out again, but it's like, hey, Mrs. Jones, I understand there's a lot going on right now. You have all your kids at home, the city's in lockdown, right? Um, and I first want to thank you truly for taking the time out of your day to meet with me with everything you have going on right now. I respect your time. So we're going to get started in just a moment. I actually just wanted to say I feel very fortunate to be able to work virtually. I know that's not the case for everybody. And I know it's kind of an unusual job, but I appreciate that Cutco has given me the opportunity to continue working on my goal, working on my scholarship and earning income from home. And I understand everyone is impacted by this. And, and my goal is hopefully to take up your mind off of things for a bit. We're going to have a lot of fun. And I'd love to help make your life easier over the next few weeks, um, especially as you might be home cooking more than you're normally used to. Um, and then go into building your report. Just curious, have you guys noticed that you've been cooking more or just about the same in the past week or two, right? And then you go into who likes to cook more, you or your spouse, right? What do you usually cook? Like you can use that to kind of launch into building a rapport. But I think it's important to address the situation that's going on and let them know that, hey, my goal is to, yeah, take your mind off things for a little bit. We're going to have a lot of fun. I hope to be the highlight of your day. Just make it positive when you go into it. Um, it just kind of, it, it brings that wall down and it doesn't make it feel like a sales appointment. It just makes it feel like a conversation with this, this nice kid or this nice human, right? Who's just here to spend 45 minutes to an hour laughing, having fun, making jokes and showing you this really cool product that you'll probably end up loving anyways. So, yeah. <laughs> to totally, Lindsay. I, I love it. I've been, I've been telling people that I work with, people that I, you know, coach and mentor that, uh, yeah. you know, uh, we're providing a great service. You know, we're entertaining people for an hour, uh, 40, you know, 40 minutes to an hour. If it's a no sale, that's okay. Uh, if it's a sale, that's, you know, it's better for us, and I believe for them, but you know, people are, are bored out of their minds, their home. This is a great distraction. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I think if we all go in just like saying, Hey, we're going to add value to this person. And I think if we add that value, if, if we come from you, sales will happen. Uh, and uh, a lot of them will. Um, and I think that's, that's, that's kind of it. I, I wanted to add one thing because I actually did a yeah. virtual the other day for a woman who was with her two grandchildren during the virtual. And at one point, one of them who was kind of young started crying. And I'm oh. like trying to, you know, like, don't cry during my clothes now. Come on, you know? And and <laughs> oh. so I literally started doing like that super, you know, like that thing, you know, and the, and the oh baby God. stopped crying and, you know, she kind of got her, you know, she, the grandmother was, you know, so like oh. kind of rolling with it and, uh, you know, you know, being, I think being okay with the process that they're in and, uh, you know, nothing's wrong. Everything's good. Do what you need to do. Uh, I, I think really, really makes a difference and I, and just accepting, accepting. I love it. Uh, okay, great. Uh, the next thing I wanted to ask you about, um, mm -hmm. in terms of just how you are, um, going through your appointment, what do you, what do you have in front of you? Like if I, if I'm, 
You know, it's yeah. like if I'm doing a phone jam, right? You want your leads, you want your schedule or, you know, however you have it. You want your phone approach, you want your objections. You want to be ready so that, you know, uh, when, when you're starting to do what you're doing, you're, you have everything that you need. So what do you have in front of you? What do you do to make sure that you are, uh, you know, prepared? For sure. So I always, of course, I have um, my laptop. So here's, here's my advice, by the way, on, uh, on the device you use. Because at the end of the day, I think what's most important is the device that the customer uses, right? And you want it to be a laptop or a computer. Um, you don't want to have to have them use their phone. It's just small, right? It's, it's harder to, to see, to read on the screen. Um, of course, iPads and tablets you want to stay away from just because it's an extra step to then download the Prezi app open it up and sometimes you run into more technical difficulties there. So I think it's most important the device that the customer uses. Um, the reason why I say that I had a girl ask me, um, I was teaching this to the California division the other day and she asked about doing it on an iPad herself because that's the only device that she has. She doesn't have a laptop. She only has a tablet. And I was like, that's completely fine. As long as you're the customer is set up and ready to go. I mean, I had times where I was in a bind and I did a virtual while I was in a car and I just literally read from the manual, but because I had written exactly where to click and had an idea of what slides came next, I was able to still follow along. So, um, but of course, when you're setting up for your environment, having a laptop, right, is best. I always had my white manual, right? Same white manual that um, most reps use. I had my like, um, like maybe my money, like one liners or thought joggers for recommendations, right? Um, I know sometimes we get awesome sheets at conferences or from Vector Connect that have just like additional how to help you close more on um, signature sets or ulties, right? How to help you close on cookware and flatware if you've gotten to that point. Um, so I always had my little like closing or rec sheets to help me out. And then I always had a notebook and I called it my virtual notebook and every single page was a different virtual. And this is how I organized my business. And um, at the top of the page, I'd always write their name, um, their number, right? Where they are physically, if I knew beforehand and who recommended them. And if they were a recommendation, what their recommendation thought um, and maybe roughly how many recs they gave me. So just kind of at the top, a quick blur before going into it. Then throughout the demo, I would take notes um, on pretty much anything and everything I could. Now, if you're a newer rep, focus more on following the manual and clicking ahead, right? If you're a more experienced rep, you've been doing this for a while, you know the virtual like the back of your hand, right? Then you, you may have some more freedom to take notes. But I took notes on every single name that came up, right? So like their kids' names, um, if their spouse wasn't there, their spouse's name, um, and then anything that came up. So for example, if um, I said, hey, how are you? What have you been up to today, right? How's your Saturday going so far? And she goes, oh, I just got back from lunch with my friend Nancy, right? Or I was just on the phone with my friend Nancy because we're now in coronavirus era. Um, I would write down Nancy. Oh, cool, what'd you talk about? Oh, that's so cool, right? You build rapport there, but then you can ask for Nancy as a recommendation at the end. So I wrote down every name that came up so that if we got to Rex and she'd only given me maybe three or four or five at this point, I could help her thought jog be like, oh my God, what about Nancy? She sounds awesome, right? Um, and then you can bring that back up. So I always write down names. I also wrote down anything I noticed that she, um, first of all, I wrote down what she cooked, right? What she likes to cook so that I could remember that later when I'm walking through the sets. Um, and different accessories. And then I wrote down um, anything that she liked or didn't like, if she ever said something verbally, like, oh my gosh, oh, I love that, right? Before you had even gotten to asking for the sale. And she loved the petite, um, like petite chopping knife. She loved the salmon knife, whatever it is, right? And then, um, or anything she mentioned, if she's like, oh, honey, we are good on wine openers. Oh my gosh, I have 15, right? And I have my electric wine opener that I love that I've been using every day and I, I don't want to replace it or whatever. I would just put like good on wine openers, loves to drink wine, and then maybe try to upsell her on ours. So um, any notes I could. And then for those, um, for the younger, younger reps, for the, the um, newer reps, I should say, 
who are calling their manager during the appointment to get specials and deals, that's where I would write down the first call special or whatever the deal is, exactly how my manager said it. Normally it's this price, but today because of the first call special or it's the last day of the contest deal, right? It's gonna be this much, savings of this much monthly price. I would always write it down. And then lastly, at the very end of the appointment, um, after we got off the phone, I'd write down anything that I had forgotten to write down, right? And then two is I would always put what she bought and then what she didn't buy. If for whatever reason today she, she liked the cookware, she liked the flatware, she liked the, the knife set, but she, for whatever reason, only ended up going with the knife set today. Hopefully you're closing her on the full kitchen, getting her a slamming deal. But if she decided, you know what, we're gonna wait on this until after my son's graduation, or we're gonna wait on this until um, he gets married, whatever it is, I would write down what they bought, what they didn't buy. And that way you can always call for a phone order later. So because I have this virtual notebook, I had pages of what the customer bought and if there were any accessories or cookware, flatware, et cetera, they mentioned but didn't get that day. I would on the last day of my contest in my magic car ride, right? Um, or last day of the push, I would call for phone orders and say um, the, the regular phone order script that's along the lines of, hey, Mrs. Jones, how are you? Oh my gosh, it's your knife girl, your knife guy, right, Lindsay? Um, and then you'd say, do you still have all your fingers? How are you doing? How is your son's graduation? You build rapport. And then you go into, hey, Mrs. Jones, I know it's, I'm so glad you're loving your Galley Plus 6 set, right? Um, loving those super shares, that sounds awesome. Um, and hey, listen, I know you didn't get everything you wanted the first time around. And the reason why I'm calling, I'm actually in the last day of my two, three week contest, right? My goal is to sell $40,000 over these three weeks. Um, and I'm really close to hitting my goal. I'm only three grand away. I'm not calling you to get all three grand, although I won't stop you if you want to, I'll get you a slam and deal. But um, we are actually having a special right now where I know you really like the gardening tools you like the barbecue set, um, it just wasn't the right time before. And because it's the last day of the contest, I can hook you up. Do you mind actually um, and just jumping on the website real quick, just so I can walk you through, right? Or you set up a five minute call with her where you can just walk her through the website, re-show her some of those accessories, hopefully upsell her on more, et cetera. So the reason why I always kept that, and this is by the way, this virtual notebook that I did with virtuals, I ended up doing the same thing for lives and service calls. And on every service call appointment, I would have them, I had like a testimonial sheet where they would write a testimonial out for me. And then we would keep track. I'd write down everything they currently had with Cutco, everything I upsold them on that day. And then anything that was on their like, like maybe, maybe later list that I created with them. And then I would do the same thing. So, so that's something you can actually use with service calls and live demos too, is just keep notes on what they liked and what they bought, what they liked, but maybe what they didn't get the first time around. Um, and then lastly, I always wrote down how many recommendations they gave me in CPO at the bottom. So I had this literally one sheet of my customer. I you know, of course, Vector Connect helps keeps tabs on your business too. Um, so if you're doing this at a high volume, it, it, it maybe you do this on an Excel sheet instead of an actual physical notebook, um, but it's just a way to keep organized. So, so I had my manual, my notebook, my like money, like closing tips or rec thought joggers. I had a glass of water always. Um, I always had my laptop. I was ideally sitting at a desk, right? You don't want to be like chilling down here doing your appointment because then you have that kind of couch voice, right? Instead of your proper phone voice, where you're able to be yourself. And then once I got really good at the demo, I, uh, I would pace, I would stand up and pace because I tend to like project better when I'm standing. Um, so I would either create a standing desk um, or I would just kind of pace with my manual in place and then click when I needed to click ahead. Does that answer your question? <laughs> Yeah, yes, and more. And I, I think it's a great point to pay attention to your state, uh, you know, to how you're sitting or standing or breathing, you know, like the piece of file while you dial or whatever. If you're, if you're 
uh, you know, projecting excitement, you know, that we say enthusiasm sells Cutco and they can hear that. If, I mean, if it's obviously, if, if it's a phone uh, on camera thing, of course they'll see it, but they can hear it in your voice. If, you know, they can hear if you're excited, they can hear if you're not excited. And uh, just by smiling, focusing on how you're sitting or standing and so on and your energy, uh, I think really, uh, I think it really is, is huge. I think that's great. Um, anything else on uh, creating a connection uh, slash establishing rapport before we really kind of dive into yeah. uh, how your appointment looks and, uh, and how you bring them to a sale? Sure. So I actually, in my virtual manual, I have kind of like the three keys to success for a virtual. And that's, um, oh yeah, go for it. <laughs> Should I keep going? <laughs> I'll keep going while you get that um, since it's recording. So your three keys to success. Number one is your enthusiasm. Um, playing off of what you just said, enthusiasm is so important on the virtual. It is on the live as well. And I, by enthusiasm, I don't mean being like too over the top. Um, because if you have kind of a chill personality, you still want to be you. But with a virtual, I think it's important to bring like 110% of your personality, right? If you're normally at 100%, bring it at 110 on a virtual so that they can really hear it through your voice because we all get that phone voice, right? And um, especially, so I didn't do any of my appointments through video or Zoom or any kind of, yeah, like video camera, but I did them all just through audio, calling the customer, having them on speaker, right? And then walking them through the presentation. Um, once I got really good, then that's when I started to actually screen share my appointment so I could click ahead. Um, I wouldn't do that though until you've gotten good practice with the virtual. The reason being, if you screen share, then now Mrs. Jones doesn't have anything to do. She's not, she's literally just sitting there listening to you and it can turn more into like a lecture experience. Um, she doesn't want to take a virtual online class for an hour on knives, right? You want this to be a conversation just like you would a, a normal live demo. So if you're really good at asking questions and keeping them engaged, then you can screen share. But um, the reason why I bring this up, so we all have this phone voice, right? And normally if you listen to yourself, it's kind of like a muted version of you. Um, the best example I can give is like when your mom or your parents call you, right? Um, and you're like, okay, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, I got it. Cool, great. Hope you're well too. Okay, bye. Right? And it's just this kind of muted version of you. It doesn't mean you're upset talking to your mom. It just means you're like, okay, sure. Yeah, whatever. Bye. Um, so on the phone, it's important. This can help your regular phone calls too, not just the virtual, but your body language affects your tonality, right? So in order to change your tonality, you have to change your body language. So I tell everyone doing virtuals, pretend it's alive. When, you, when you're talking about the disadvantages of common knives, right, if you're following like the, the white manual and you get to the gross face page, you scrunch it up, right? Um, you go, maybe go a little over the top than usual when you're doing it virtual, right? Because then they can actually hear the disgust coming through your voice, right? Or when you're talking, I know I talk with my hands a lot, um, but when you're talking, get into it. Make sure your posture is straight. Make, make sure you're comfortable. You're in a position. You're not just chilling and being like, all right, if you click ahead just once, you'll see the very nice, right? Um, you're actually able to get into it. So pretend I always visualize that the customer was still sitting in front of me, that I was watching her at her laptop, right? Um, and I think that really helped me visualize that it was an actual appointment. And like, I even like, I'll go like this, like when I'm talking about things, like pretend I'm actually like cutting, right? Um, you don't have to sit there and pretend you're slicing a tomato, but just just remember that your, your body language will help bring out the enthusiasm through the phone. Um, so that's the first key to success for a virtual is just making the facial expressions, keeping your body language as you would um, during the live. And then what can help with that is recording your demo. Um, I think, I know you've probably done this in your career before, but recording your clothes, your recommendation approach, do the same thing for your virtual. Take a, a Saturday night or a Saturday afternoon, right, after you finish with appointments and sit there and just kind of go through the, 
the money parts of the virtual and play it back, listen to yourself and be like, hmm, would I buy a set for myself, right? Or would I buy a kitchen? Would I just buy pieces? Does it sound like I'm only getting excited about one specific knife, right? Would I give myself recommendations? Does it sound like I'd only give myself a few? Does it sound like 10 or 20 is simple and, and I, I should give you more? Like um, just kind of, you can use that in any part of your business to help you grow and get better. Um, but so that's key one is just your enthusiasm. Number two is keeping in control. I think it's really important with a virtual, um, a there are a few key tips to help you stay in control because normally you have in a live your blue book, right? And you wouldn't just hand your blue book to the customer and say, ready, set, go, start flipping through because now she's looking at gardening tools while you're talking about the forever guarantee, right? So you want to keep in control. And um, then lastly, I would say key to success on the virtual is literally follow your manual or follow, or if you're an advanced rep and you have your demo down, do the same demo on a virtual. The product doesn't change. Your enthusiasm shouldn't change. Um, it's just a slightly different experience um, to selling Cutco. So, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. All the, all the keys. Uh, it's really interesting. When I was um, a kind of a newer rep, I was taught mm -hmm. the seven steps to getting a sale. and uh, and we're going to kind of go into some of this. And they said, you know, the first step is establish rapport, right? Second step is establish a general problem, right? That's that whole yucky face section you were talking about, yeah. right? And the junk knives in, 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 a, in a person. Um, but still you have junk knives in, in a, you know, you can talk about it. Uh, three was like establish a, a specific problem and create a need, you know, and all of that. Uh, and then four, of course, was like, here we go. Ah, uh, you know, offer a solution, cut co, solve their problem, build value. Uh, and then uh, the other three, of course, were compare price, close, give a reason, and, and ask for the order. Um, so uh, give us a sense of kind of, uh, and I know that some people will, will be doing the Prezi like you did, some people will be doing the Mike Monroe, some people will, doing, uh, will be doing something else when it comes to it. But give me a sense, walk us through how you bring somebody from, I'm doing this, you know, to, to help, help this nice person out into, ooh, maybe I might get something. Because uh, we always love that thing, you're going to get anything, but you know, so how, how do you take a customer from uh, curious to serious? Ooh, I like that. Curious to serious. Um, so I am, I'm really big on goal sharing and setting up the appointment the right way. Because I think closing, of course, starts, starts in the beginning. Um, closing actually starts when you sell their friends on Cutco, <laughs> um, cause then you can obviously use their, their story, their testimonial to show, Hey, everybody has Cutco. Everybody loves Cutco. Right. Um, and I, I think you might too. So, um, I am, I'm really big on kind of the start of the appointment and I know everybody has their, their different process, but when I was doing live demos, right, I would have my goal page or explaining, hey, let me tell you why I'm doing this. Kind of like, why am I sitting in your kitchen right now um, showing you knives, right? Because that's always like uh, closing is a lot of overcoming objections before they even happen, right? Is addressing every point of concern they could possibly have before they eat, before it even comes up. Um, so that by the end of the process, they've gone, oh, wow, you've shown me all the reasons why I should get this. There really isn't a reason why I shouldn't at this point, right? And they go ahead and get it today. So in the beginning of a virtual, um, I, I always tell everyone, create some kind of, um, I'm, I'm trying to think of how you do this as an ex advanced rep too, but create a kind of profile for you, yourself. What I always did is I had a goal sheet. And this is what I tell, especially the newer um, reps, but create, even if it's like a, a simple one page document, think of it almost as like a Facebook profile page, right? Where you just have a photo of you just to show them, hey, this is who you're talking to right now, right? I'm, I'm a real person, I'm a nice human, um, or I'm a cute college kid. And then you have, um, thank you so much for helping me, like at the top, right? You always wanna be thanking them. And then I have like two or three bullets of kind of like, who I am and what my goal is. And obviously you're gonna be building rapport 
Um, and if you're still on your initial list, these some of these people are people that you know personally. But for the recommendations who just heard about you from their friend Susie and now they're sitting in front of you or doing this over the phone appointment who really have no idea who you are than just being this nice kid their friend Susie just saw, um, it just kind of helps bring that wall down, that kind of like sales wall that some people, some customers put up, right? To establish a genuine connection. So I recommend having a photo of you, right? You can either have like a professional photo of you or a fun photo of you, something that shows your personality. Um, you can also have, I recommend if you can have two or three photos that show maybe like your Cutco team, right? At a conference or um, your team in the office or at team night out, all having fun together, playing laser tag. It doesn't have to be necessarily super professional and serious. It can also just show Mrs. Jones that, hey, I'm a, I'm a fun person, right? Um, and then you have like two or three bullets on what your goals are. Whether your goal is, hey, you are in the middle of a contest and my goal is to sell $30,000 in the next two weeks, right? Um, or your goal is, hey, I wanna pay for my first car, or your goal is I'm supporting a family with children right now, right? And uh, we are throwing my two-year-old daughter a badass like three-year-old birthday party next week. Um, and my goal is to like have the coolest three-year-old birthday party you've ever seen. Um, and that's my goal or whatever it is, right? It doesn't have to necessarily just be Cutco based. Uh, I think it's important to maybe have some goals that are not Cutco based so that you're not just kind of pushing them on like sales, 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 right? Um, I am also, by the way, a very kind of like a soft closer, like a, let me bring you a lot of value, right? And let me, let me help you arrive to that decision, but not, um, I know every personality is different, but I'm very, like, I'm a very laid back seller, um, even though I know my energy is sometimes a bit over the top. Um, but I recommend um, for newer reps to create like a simple word document. What I did, I went all out and I created a goal website um, and I have a link to it in the virtual manual. By all means, you don't have to create a whole website. Um, I think if you're more advanced and you're walking them through your rep portal, it has the little photo of you at the top and you can just build rapport off of that. Be like, hey, that's me. That's what I look like, right? If you're not video chatting. Um, but on my goal website, actually I'm looking at it right now. I had a photo of me and my little sister on it just to show, and I love my siblings. They are my world. I have three younger siblings. So I always talk about them and build rapport. Hey, do you have kids? Oh my gosh, do you miss them? Or if they're off at college and whatever. Um, but I had on the front page, it says, hello, thanks for your help. And thank you so much for your help. Um, marketing, this was back when I created this, I was still in college, but I was like, marketing for Cutco has helped me build my resume as an assistant manager in the Gainesville office. Um, and it, Cutco is helping me graduate debt free. I greatly appreciate any contribution towards helping me reach my goals. And then I had literally a goals page that showed, um, I think it was a picture of the Punta Cana Dominican Republic trip that I was trying to win at the time. And then it was, my goals were to pay for my first car before graduation in May, um, and then hit the FSM promotion, and then uh, secure a district manager position, um, and how you can help stock up on your spring Cutco supplies, um, and then why Cutco it lasts forever, forever guarantee. So it was just like a little kind of like goal sheet before opening the demo that I walked them through. Um, and then I always talked about the automatic sponsorship and helping me with recommendations at first. Um, but I also, by the way, on that kind of being more of a, a laid back seller, right? Kind of like a soft closer, um, not a, hey, you have to buy today, right? In order to help me out. Um, I have this one liner I would always use that's in my um, manual that I, here, I have it right here. Um, at the very beginning, and if you're using the, the Prezi, this is actually, I think, slide two of the virtual presentation. Um, it shows the, the scholarship and the sponsorship. And I always use this one-liner, and you've probably heard a version of this or use a version of this in your demos. Um, but now, Mrs. Jones, the scholarship is based solely on sales, but we have this automatic sponsorship that isn't. So really, everyone I see is at least able to help me out with that. I'll mention it at the end, but because we're part of the Direct Sales Association, we don't go door to door or 
uh, do any random cold calling, anything like that. So the only way I can continue working on my goal, paying my way through school, working on the scholarship, et cetera, right, is through recommendations. In fact, everyone I talk to either already owns Cutco or is a recommendation from a friend. Um, your friend Susie is actually a sponsor. In, in addition to you, do you know um, Mrs. Jones um, who lives over in Glenmar Park? Oh my gosh, I, I talked to her just yesterday. Oh, that's so cool, right? And you just kind of plug some of those recommendations. Um, and then you say, hey, um, my goal today, Mrs. Jones, is really just to get you to like me enough where you might introduce me to your friends. Like I said, we'll go over that at the end. So go ahead and click forward just once. And then I kind of go into my demo. This is after you've already kind of, you've built rapport. Um, but I always get them tied in on me and more so just kind of like sharing why I'm doing this. Um, so it, it, and I know your question is how do you take them from curious to, to curious, but I, I think the, the sale people buy from people they like, right. And at the end of the day, they buy it because of you. Um, because if they say no to you, another cuckoo rep or a more experienced cuckoo rep could come along down the road and still close them and sell them, right? So at the end of the day, I think it's all about getting them tied in on you and um, why you, you are gonna be their Cutco rep, right? Because at the end of the day, someone's gonna be their Cutco rep at some point and you obviously want it to be you. So I would always get them tied in on my goals. And I know um, we talked about this on our last call, but I would have some virtuals that would have to end early, right? Let's say they're all of a sudden their husband calls and now they have to go pick up a kid that they didn't think they had to. Um, or for whatever reason, they would say, hey, honey, I'm so sorry, but I, I only have a few minutes left, right? And I had those people, uh, I was able to still close them because they were, most of the time it was like, hey, I have to go, I'm so sorry, but I really wanna help you out, right? And, and this stuff looks awesome. And then you, that's the opportunity where you sing it can say, hey, no big deal, completely understand. How about this? Um, I don't have to walk you through the, the whole first part of the presentation again, but do you have like 15 minutes, whether it's tonight or tomorrow morning? And then boom, I'd set up the rest of our call, the rest of our appointment. Um, I, would, I would play it off of, hey, it's only gonna be 10, 15 minutes, right? Even if we were only halfway through, just to make sure like, because she doesn't want to set up a full another hour with you, to be honest, um, unless it's your aunt or your grandma. But uh, <laughs> I would always have that. And at the end of the day, once I was in my prime with virtuals, I had a 90% closing ratio. And I always felt that the reason why was that because I got them so tied in at the beginning um, that whether it was on that appointment or whether it was if they had to go and we needed to schedule that 15 minutes later, I was always able to not always, 90% of the time I was able to turn it into a sale because I had got them so tied in. So um, so I know that wasn't as much the sales answer as you wanted, but I think th the beginning is so important to sell them on why you. Um, my job now, by the way, to build marketing campaigns, every company has to advertise. That's how they stay afloat right? That's how they become a successful business is by reaching more people and helping more people with their product or their service. So at the end of the day, advertising is a necessity, whether they know it or not. So they're going to spend the money at some point. And my goal is to get them to spend it with me or trust me to help them build their campaign, right? Because they could call any media, media rep out there with any company. Why work with me? And I, I, I attribute my success with that to what I did with Cutco and just creating that connection in the beginning. Um, I know <laughs> these are very awesome. long no, answers. I get it because question. you know, yeah. <laughs> no, there was a, there, they are. And I, and one, well, I'm like, I'm like, right. People are like, okay, I'm, I'm, this is great, but it's long, but it's great. And that's yeah. okay. Um, let me say one thing. You're, you're doing a beautiful job. For sure. Uh, you know, sometimes maybe it's better to have, you know, more. What, what, here, here's the thing. Uh, Mike Ari, has a great rep uh, in uh, in the eastern region and in the northeast region, used to say, uh, if if uh, if somebody has, you know, 25 minutes for an appointment, and they he's like, I have to go in 25 minutes. It's the only way you can get it. Some rich, you know, rich lady who's like, you know, finally got in after you know two months. 
he said, I do not skip connection or rapport. Um, and For I think, sure. you know, at that 90% closing percentage is because people were willing to listen to you because they, they came to know you, they came to like you, and they came to trust you, and you were able to do it very quickly and uh, seemingly effortlessly, uh, uh, you know, through, uh, through your authenticity and, and what you shared. I do have a, a, a quick logistics question that uh, either it's a, a one sheet so people could share through Drive or attach to an email, or you had a website. Is that something that you would email um, right when the appointment started, or was it something you would email uh, beforehand, or would you just, because it was a website, did you just say, go to my website, here's my goals website, how'd you do that? Yeah, I would or do would it recommend? as, I would do it when the appointment started, so um, I would always call the customer first, right, hey, how are you, okay. oh my gosh, how's your day, um, are you, are you, just want to make sure, are you sitting down at a computer right now, okay, awesome, do you mind opening up your email, and then give them a, a few seconds. Okay, great. I'm going to email you the link to the presentation, right? Or your rep portal or cutco.com, whatever you're using. And, um, and then you attach it there. So, um, and then how you say it is, hey, Mrs. Jones, um, we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to get started in just a moment. Um, I just wanted to introduce myself. I know um, you only kind of know me through Susie, and I just called you last night. And if you don't mind, go ahead and open up that PDF attachment. Awesome. Well, that's me. And then you kind of go into it. So as, of course, you're building a rapport. But I would do it right at the beginning. Awesome. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I think a key thing, and, and we'll, we'll probably come back to this when it comes to Rex and when it comes to sales and closing, but I just want people listening. I'm sure they're noticing the social proof aspect of what you're saying and the name dropping. And that goes with being prepared, but it goes with how people can feel comfortable, whether it's, uh, you know, spending a lot of money on Cutco because they know that their friend did it as well, or referring you to lots of people being a sponsor, et cetera. They know that their friend was as well and how well it worked out for everybody. Um, before we get to Rex, um, it, it seems in terms of the, the, the sales aspect, you know, your answer may be, hey, in terms of selling, just follow the script, follow the program. That's all you need to do. Uh, so I'm curious if you have any any uh, thoughts or guidance on you know presenting Cutco, uh, other than you know follow the program so to speak, which is always great For advice, sure. and yeah. also how you share uh, different packages and programs with your customer. Yeah. Yes. So um, I always have them get out two things at the beginning of the appointment, and um, and this is why it's so important to do virtual demos while they're at home. So I always have them grab their favorite like chopping knife and favorite steak knife, right? A straight edge and a straighted edge, just like you would a live appointment. And the reason being a, a few reasons. One, so they can have it next to their screen so they can make that visual comparison. Um, Cause I think it's a slightly different experience. If you, um, if you're sitting down with a cutco rep and they're telling you about knives, you're like, okay, that's great. These gross wooden handle knives on the screen look gross, right? And I understand the disadvantages, but they might not make the connection that, oh shoot, that steak knife I use every day is really made of the same materials. Um, it really falls into that category, right? Um, and also it helps you as a, a seller understand who the customer is and what you're working with. Just like you would on a live, you'd be able to actually assess their kitchen situation. At the very beginning of the appointment, I'd say, hey, Mrs. Jones, right, we're going to get started in just a second. And maybe this is before you have them open up their email and send them the link. Be like, hey, I know you're, you're probably sitting down. You're ready to go. We're going to jump into this in just a sec. If you don't mind, just keep me on the phone. Um, can you go to your kitchen real quick and just grab uh, your favorite, like, steak knife or chopping knife? If it's in the dishwasher, just grab another. Um, we're going to need it in just a moment. Trust me, you're not going to use it. Um, but I do have a few questions about it. And then maybe you build rapport with her on the way to the kitchen. Okay, awesome. How, how often do you guys cook? Blah, blah, blah. Right? You have them get it out. And then once they have it in front of them, hey, Mrs. Jones, go ahead and read me just the brand name on the knife. It's usually on the blade right next to the handle. So boom, now you know what you're working with, right? Wooshoff, Shoon, Hankles, et cetera. Um, and if there's no name on the knife, it usually means it's been completely rubbed away, like worn off, right? Um, if it's not engraved in the knife, it was just printed on, which means they probably have to replace their knives really, really soon. Or it's a really cheap brand that does not put 
the name on the blade, right? Sometimes it's on the handle, but I always have them grab that out and then I have them grab out a pen and a piece of paper. The reason being when you're going through the closing process, I always have them write down prices. No one likes to listen to numbers. You don't learn math over the phone. Um, so whenever you're going over prices, I have them write it down, Mrs. Jones, right before I go through the close, um, if you're following like the white manual, right, it's right after pages like nine and 10, um, or after page nine, the Wu Shaf Shun comparison um, slide that you're using. And then you go right before you go into homemaker prices, right, or if you're more advanced, you've walked her through maybe the kitchen at this point, you walked her through the Ulti first, then the Siggy, then the homemaker. Um, you're having her write it down. Hey, Mrs. Jones, you have that pen and piece of paper next to you? Awesome. I want you to go ahead, if you don't mind, and write this down, right? Um, and you walk through prices. And if you drop down properly, right? And during the demo, you went through, let's say, the ultimate, then you went through the signature, and then you went through the homemaker. If for whatever reason, those just aren't gonna work for her today or aren't right for her situation, and you've dropped down to starter sets, and then for whatever reason, now you've dropped down to like a five piece special or like a custom set special. She should have a paper that literally has maybe six or seven prices on it because you've walked her through each and slowly dropped down through each. Um, so I always make sure she has that. And um, the reason why, I mean, it's just so much easier to be able to see prices and I even have them circle it. I have them circle the savings and or the monthly price, right? Today, it's actually gonna only come out to this much. Go ahead and circle that Mrs. Jones, right? And then I ask for the sales. So I think that's so important on a virtual that people forget. If you're having a lot of no sales in a row, it's probably because you're dropping down too quickly, right? Um, and you're not having them write down prices. and the note I'll say on that, if they do write it down, it slows down the process, allows you to spend more time on each rather than just rushing through and be like, hey, it's 11.49 with A is only 250 per month over five months, no interest. Does that work for you, right? So, right, yeah. and a confused, a confused mind never buys. Exactly. And this way you're creating a, a lot of clarity. You're having them circle the easy pay thing. Uh, and especially during this time right now, you know, Mrs. Jones, we have the easy pay for you. And that allows you just to put down 20%, which is gonna be, you know, whatever that is. And then you just write, you know, just write that down, 254 a month, mm -hmm. uh, and then circle that. And, and uh, with the easy pay, there's no background check, there's no credit check, there's not even a bill. Uh, you just pay with uh, your own card, MasterCard, Visa, Amic, Discover. We also do take toilet paper for the first payment right now. And, oh, I uh, love that. You know, that's, that's awesome. That's, that's my joke. Uh, and, uh, and so that's basically what you would do, something like that? Yes. And um, to help with closing too, I know on a virtual, so if you're using a Prezi um, or any of the videos that don't really have talking over it, right? I know in the regular Prezi, it, it has like an, a video for each knife, the pairing knife, trimmer, spatula, spreader, et cetera, just showing um, someone cutting with it and showing it in action, as we say. I recommend that you talk through every video to describe what's happening and ask questions during that time, um, rather than just sitting and awkwardly watching it. I know when I was first starting virtuals, I was terrible at virtuals. Um, I think my average order was like under a hundred bucks for um, a few of them, right? My first few, now these were also my first demos ever, but um, I ended up getting up to over a $400 average order. But basically, I sat there and we awesome. just watched the video for, it was super awkward because it was like. Right. That is the pairing the night. The key is what I'm hearing over and over from you. Right, right, right. Is like, yeah. keep them engaged, keep them involved, have quality and continue to, you know, it's, this is not a, you know, I think you said something brilliant before where you're like, this is not a lecture. This is like a, this is like hanging with a friend. And I think that's, that's key, key, keep keeping that engagement, right? Mm -hmm, absolutely. Awesome. Um, I wanted to ask you, um, is, there, is there anything else before we move into recommendations? Because I feel like recommendations is, in a way, the most important part, 
right? That's what we say. Like, it's the For most sure. important part of my appointment, right? Um, yeah. And what I loved, what I loved, and clearly you were great at getting Rex because you were talking, you were virtuals, doing virtuals um, when you were, uh, you were, you were talking about the neighborhood and their neighbors. So you really were getting true Rex and, and working from Rex, which is probably why you were so successful. Um, <laughs> all right, I want to ask you about Rex. Hold that thought. Yeah. Is there anything else? around uh, closing or anything else uh, that's specific to a virtual before we move into uh, your Rex. If, sure. if you want to move into Rex, uh, that's, that's great too. Yeah, um, I think, um, I'll come back to closing in just a sec. There is one, um, one note on keeping in control that I wanted to mention because I think like with the virtual, it's just, it's just so important that um, you kind of help Mrs. Jones guide her through the process because I know on a virtual, unless you're screen sharing, she, she can click around, she could be checking email for all you know, right? Um, and I have this one liner I say at the very beginning, and this is in my manual, I say, hey, Mrs. Jones, thank you again so much for taking the time out of your day to help me out with the scholarship I'm working on or the goal. We're gonna have a lot of fun, but in order to get full credit, I do need to make sure we're on the same page throughout. So to make it easier for you, I'm just gonna tell you exactly when to click ahead. You can use a space bar or the click forward arrow. I just don't want us to spoil any of the surprises, Mrs. Jones. So if you find yourself click too far by accident, just let me know, I'll help you out and feel free to use like the back arrow on your keyboard. And then, um, that's what I say at the beginning, just to kind of set the tone that, hey, I really do want you kind of engage in paying attention. Um, the other thing, of course, kind of as you said, asking questions throughout helps keep her engaged so it's not a sales class, or, right, or like a knife class. Um, it's an actual human conversation. And then um, I always wrote in my manual, if you are using the Prezi, exactly when to click and I always told her how many times to click rather than just hey just click ahead I'd be like hey Miss Jones if you click ahead just once if you click ahead twice if you write um I'll show you how Cutco solved all these problems um if you click ahead once um this is the homemaker set right and you you keep her engaged and always ask questions on the slides right hey do you see um whether it's hey do you see the the wooden handle knife in front of you Okay, awesome. And you just kind of plug questions throughout your, your virtual, right? If you're using the, the, the rep portal or cutco.com, sometimes you're screen sharing and you're controlling that. Um, you're controlling like what you guys are looking at. But if you aren't, just keeping her engaged there. And then um, I think on closing, so it it's it's kind of like how I know newer and experienced reps, right, use the white manual on all their demos. More advanced sellers, and especially those who are doing service calls, have their service call appointment, right? Or you're, you're starting with kitchens, and then you're dropping down to sets or cookware or flatware, and then dropping down further from there. So I think, um, I, I do think you should follow your program how you would do a live and do it on the virtual. Um, if you aren't using the Prezi, I think screen sharing comes into play there. I think it's really important to screen share if maybe you're a little bit more advanced, um, just so you can control that conversation and um, control your demo a little bit better if you're not, if you're doing a more advanced version of the white manual, right, um, or even a service call. I think also if they already have Cutco, I have them, um, list what they have right and it's even easier if on the phone usually you find out if they have cutco on the phone call right because you you mentioned cutco and they're like oh my god i i have cutco and that's where you're like oh even better i can help just kind of uh, walk you through the guarantee make sure it's all up to date and good um in this case we're not doing like live service calls so it's hey i'm going to walk you through how you can send it back um to get any replacements repairs etc but I always have them take a photo. I was like, hey, Ms. Jones, if you don't mind just putting all your Cutco stuff together in front of your knife block and take a photo of it and then just text it to me. Or um, you do that in the confirmation email. Hey, if you don't mind replying back to this email with a photo of your Cutco, because I think it's so important to know what you're working with, to know your situation. I mean, that's how you sell. Is you're selling to each customer individually. You're helping them out for their custom situation. So. 
I always have um, them either show me their Cutco at the beginning of the appointment, um, or I have them text me a photo so I know what we're working with. Um, and then that's going to help you close on current Cutco customers if you know where you can upgrade them, right? Because if you just ask Mrs. Jones to describe their Cutco, they're going to be like, I have the long knife. It's sharp. Like it's got the pointed edges, right? And that could be any number of knives. So um, I think that's so important on a virtual is to know what you're working with. Totally. Mm -hmm, totally. <laughs> By the way, it's a different message, but I will be doing virtual service calls. I have, I'm in, oh, cool. I'm planning that for this coming week. So oh, yeah, awesome. hold but the like, message. I, well, I, I'm curious, is it I, like a virtual sharpening, like you're, you're helping them uh, so, so, so uh, in a nutshell, in a, in a, nut, in a nutshell, no, in a nutshell, uh, pick them up, social distance, uh, uh, cool. clean them off properly, hygiene, sharpen them while you're talking to them, show them new packages, programs, items that can enhance their current collection, and drop them off. Awesome. And, oh, you know, you again, mean, proper awesome. hygiene, all, all proper hygiene, all proper hygiene. Uh, but that's basically it. Uh, so it's multi-stage, but uh, okay. I think it's going to work. Uh, okay, back to you though. Yeah. Uh, so clearly, speaking of speaking of something that worked uh, really well for you, recommendations. Uh, it sounds like you were just a master of them. When you're saying I'm closing ninety percent, when you're saying you know, do you know this person, and they know this person because she's in their neighborhood. Clearly, even though you're not you know physically going house to house, you are going house to house virtually. So uh, please share with us. Um, you know, how you, uh, you know, how you ask for recs, anything on seed planting, haven't shared, and uh, just what, what, uh, what's going to make somebody be a master at recommendations? Absolutely. Um, I know we've covered a few of these tips so far. So starting from like the, the beginning of the appointment, you always want them to know about recommendations throughout the demo. Um, so it's not a surprise at the end, right? No one likes to be surprised. Um, if you can set that expectation at the beginning, you're going to get a lot more recommendations at the end. And you set that expectation as, hey, um, the only way I can continue working on my goal, right, is through recommendations or through the automatic sponsorship, if that's how you want to position it. Um, and then I love the line, using the line, you know, everyone I, I see and sit, sit down with or virtually speak to, right, um, either already has cut go. Um, or has been recommended from a friend um, most of the time who also has Cutco, right? And that just sets the expectation that everyone has Cutco and everyone recommends their friends. So having that one-liner that I already gave in the beginning is huge. Um, I also, in my, in my goal website, I had a whole page that said become a sponsor. Again, you don't have to go over the top on this. You don't have to build your own website. Maybe it's literally a, a quick um, maybe not a paragraph, but like two bullet points at the bottom of your goal sheet. Um, maybe you have like scholarship or my goals and then automatic sponsorship or my sponsors um, at the bottom. And then I actually on my um, like goal website that I walk them through at the beginning of every appointment, I listed out a few of my sponsors um, and then starred the double sponsors. And I walked them through and I was like, yeah, um, uh, I, so I had the automatic sponsorship kind of on the screen so that they could see and how it works. Every 10 recommendations makes you a sponsor, 20 counts for a double sponsor. And then why become a sponsor? I had on screen every 50 sponsors I get, the company gives me $150 worth of Cutco I can use to pay for textbooks, um, or use to build my set, or, um, you could kind of put in your own little goal there. And then I had a list of my sponsors. I think there's like, I don't know, 12 to 15 names on here. Um, Cause again, normally with a live demo, you have your recommendation binder, right? Or your recommendation book and you have pages of sponsors so that when they flip through, by the time they get to the sheet they're supposed to fill out, they've seen five or six sheets of 20, 30, 10 recommendations, right? It looks like everybody's doing it. Um, and so I wanted to create a similar experience on the virtual. So maybe at the bottom, if you have like a one page goal sheet, uh, PDF, at the bottom you put um, 
the, like one of my goals is to hit a hundred sponsors um, before the end of the summer or the end of the campaign. Um, only 20 sponsors to go. Um, how it works, every 10 recommendations makes you a sponsor. And then maybe you list a few names at the bottom. Again, you can kind of make that your own, but I made sure that the sponsorship, right, becoming a sponsor recommendations was something I really plugged at the beginning so that it wasn't a surprise at the end. Um, then, of course, as I'm doing the demo, I'm writing down names of people that come up, starring them for later so I can bring them back up, right? Or I'm writing down, maybe she mentions, yeah, I'm originally from Ohio, right? Um, but now we live in California. Okay, great. Oh, where'd you live before California? Oh, we lived in Nebraska. Okay, awesome. Then at the end, I'd be like, who do you know in Nebraska? Who do you know in Ohio? Um, so I was always bringing up places too, because wherever someone lived, they know people there. And um, let me pull up my, my rec tips in my manual right here. Um, so on, sure. on the actual recommendation approach, um, I always asked, so you've heard this before, and I know um, if you're a rep listening, you've probably heard your manager say this at some point, but you're always asking, who do you know, right? Who do you know that might be nice enough to help me out? Not, do you know anyone? Because that's a yes or no question. You want them to Right. Who do you know who likes made in the USA products? Who do you know who, uh, you know, knows everybody? Who do you know who uh, is, is involved in you? your church group or your school group or your synagogue group? Who do you know? Who, those types of questions, right? Exactly. Always who do you know? Who do you know? Right? It's about who you know, um, not what you know. <laughs> and I, um, I always had them put me on speaker before I did my rec approach. I think that's so important so that they can just kind of scroll through their phone. Just like on a live demo, you might say, hey, if you don't mind um, grabbing at your cell phone for this next portion, right? And then um, you say, while I'm cleaning up and go into your rock approach. I always have them put me on speaker. Just, hey, Mrs. Jones, if you don't mind, just go me, put me on speaker. Most of the time, they'll all already have you on speaker. But that way, she can open up her contact list and just scroll through A to Z. And here's one, one tip I'll give. So um, I always get asked about recommendations on a virtual because a lot of people say, hey, I've had more trouble getting recs on a virtual than I had with a live. Hold on, I'm going to grab one sec. <laughs> sure. So. Who do you know um, who's thirsty? <laughs> I, uh, who do you know who's thirsty? Drinks a lot of water. We have something in common. Talks a lot. Um, I, uh, I always tell people, I know this is kind of backward advice, but expect to get less recs on a virtual than you would a live and be ready to coach the customer up to five or 10 or 15 or 20 on a virtual, a little more so than you would have to do on a live normally. Because on a live, I think it is, I mean, at face value, it, it's a, somewhat of an easier experience to have the full rec sheet in front of her to be able to just go and write things down. So I think if you go into it with the expectation of, hey, she might only give you two or three at first, and knowing that's okay, and it's your job to ju to coach her to five or 10, um, it's, it's gonna help you, because I know I would do, like, uh, once I started doing live demos and I was doing lives and virtuals, I would be like, oh my gosh, these people are just giving me 10 recommendations on a live, but then on a virtual, we'd get to three, and I'd be like, okay, well, thank you so much, uh, have a great day, bye, right? Um, and so you have to be ready to coach. So this is why I always had my recommendation thought joggers on a sheet next to me during the demo. And um, before I give you a few more tips on that, I do wanna say always do recommendations before you get the credit card info. And the reason being, at the end of the day, this is a sales appointment, right? Mrs. Jones is gonna think, hey, as soon as she gives you the credit card number, that's it, we're done, right? And kind of going back to how an hour on the phone is a different mindset than an hour in person, it's a little harder for her to just kick you out of her house <laughs> after you've gotten, uh, after she, you've written up the order and got the credit card info. But it's a little easier to say, hey, honey, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, it's been an hour, I really have to go. Oh, okay, okay, thank you so much, thank you, okay, bye, click, right? 
So you all, I always asked for recommendations before I wrote up the order um, every single time because the, the few times that I didn't do that, I would run into like kind of the time crunch, right? Um, so I always do that. So when you're actually asking for recommendations, um, I always kind of go right into it. So who are a couple of people off the top of your head that might be nice enough to help me out? We can start with names. Um, well, actually, I used to say we can start with names and then come back to numbers. If she's scrolling through her contact list, it's all right there. Um, right, she's on her phone, right? Exactly. It's 2020 and when you were doing it in 20, yeah. Yeah. Um, she's going like this, she's going like that. <laughs> yeah, she's basically just scrolling through. So um, I would probably say, hey, Mr. Jones, most people just scroll through their phones A to Z. We can start with A and then go through Z, right? Um, or something fun like that. Right, right. Thank, thank you so much, Mrs. Jones. I really appreciate your help. But you always end it on the thank you, right? Um, kind of assume the sale, just like with in closing, you assume the sale. Assume the sale of recommendations. Now, here's what I recommend. You write them down, like, or if I'm doing the appointment, I, I actually physically write them down. You never want her to email them to you later. You don't want to give Mrs. Jones more work to do than she has to. And I know at the end of the Prezi, there is a Google form that she could click on and fill it out. What I've been telling people, my personal opinion, is that you fill it out. Why? Because you can usually get more. And two is that um, basically you can qualify as you go through and write your own notes. Just as in a live, she gives you the list and then you go back over it with her. Okay, cool. Who likes to cook? What is their spouse's name? Are they married? And you qualify on a virtual um, I would use the Google form, or if you have your own program, pull up an Excel sheet on your computer, go right into maybe your rec um, file where you keep all your recommendations online and on your Google Drive or, or however you keep them, and then just start typing them in there. That way, if she's like, okay, cool, um, uh, how about I'll give you my sister, Mary Jones, here's her phone number. Then right on the spot, you can ask, okay, cool, is she married? What's her spouse's name? Um, where is she located? Where does she live? Right? And then you can type out those notes. It's much easier than her having her fill out the Google form. She's only going to give you the name and number. She, you're not going to have her go back through and write down, okay, married, cook, hunt, fish, fishes, etc. You know? Um, so that is, so that's my thought on you filling out recommendations. You can qualify a lot better. And then um, just go into it knowing she might give you two to three. So after the first, like, let's say two to five recommendations, this is where you start moving to each category, right? Using your thought joggers. Thank you. Oh, Mrs. Jones, thank you so much for those. Oh, I'm really excited um, to call them. Who are some of your nicest neighbors, right? Who do you know from church? Who do you know? Uh, I know you, you just got back from your country club. Who are some of your nicest country club friends, right? Then after six to eight, Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, Mrs. Jones, you're only two or three away from becoming a sponsor and helping me pay for textbooks, continue working on my goal, et cetera. Who do you know on the West Coast? Who do you know on the East Coast? I can do these presentations in any state and I'm trying to be the first in my office or in my area to do one in all 50. Now you've opened up the door to the rest of the country. Um, and one of the lines that's a, I- That's a money line, by the way, I love that. I'd say not, you know, about doing, doing one in all 50. I think that's, that's, a, that's a money line. Water. Water. Uh, go ahead. And then yeah. um, that, I loved that. And have fun with it too. I would ask people for like Alaska and Hawaii reps or recs just because. Um, true story, I actually, it was like the last day of a push. I think it was SE1. <laughs> Excuse me. And uh, it was, I did a Hawaii demo at two o'clock in the morning, my time. I was on the East Coast. And they are six hours behind us where they were at the time. So it was what, eight o'clock PM, their time in Hawaii. And I sold an essentials plus five and hit my goal. It was awesome. But I was, I wouldn't recommend doing a lot of demos past midnight. <laughs> um, and definitely not if it's in the same time zone as, as they are. But uh, it just opens up the door to be able to call people at late hours or doing during contests where um, where you might need that extra demo or two, right? 
And I think if you're, I was telling people, if you're on the East Coast, right, and you're able to get West Coast recommendations, now it can be 11 o'clock midnight your time and you can still make phone calls where um, during a reasonable hour for people on the West Coast or do demos at that time. And um, if you're on the West Coast, now you can call them earlier in the day. Maybe it's like four or five o'clock in the morning your time, right? But it's 8 a.m. On the, on the East Coast. Um, so just a way to, to kind of get ahead as a rep, rep. And then what I always ask, since I wasn't local to um, Florida, is I would ask them for Florida recommendations so that I might be able to do some lives. Like, cause I was, as I was coming up on graduation, that, that's when I was getting a car um, and able to drive. <laughs> so I would ask for local recs. Um, and even in my hometowns, I say, hey, Mrs. Jones, who do you know in the Washington DC area? That's where I live. And I would love to get practice showing a few people Cutco in person. It really helped me out. Thank you so much. <coughs> So I think that, and then I, I think the last thing I'll say is, is the can I email them to you objection? Because you'll get that quite a few times, especially if it's at the very end of a demo, a long demo, right? She'll say, hey, do you mind if I just email them to you? And you can say, you could, Mrs. Jones, but I know you probably have a lot to do today and this will only take a minute. <coughs> Excuse me. Could I just get your top three to five real quick? Most people just take a quick scroll through their contacts from A to Z. Again, I'm not looking for people who definitely buy, just those who are nice and have a kitchen. Who are some of your nicest siblings, right? Or who are some of your nicest friends? That's you know? awesome. Yeah, that's, that's, that's great. Um, I love that, that kind of gentle way of, of, of kind of handling it. Um, I will say, and this is something where I might be a little bit different, yeah. but you know, different people sure. have different ways of, of dealing and solving the same uh, problem Absolutely. that you need to do. Well, I'll say this for a minute. I'll no, I'm, just, I'm just getting uh, water. <laughs> no, I know, I know, I know. Um, I was going to say, um, I, uh, what I do before I ask for Rex is yeah. uh, I, I do get the credit card uh, with the order because uh, I just, that makes me feel good and I feel comfortable sure. and confident with that. It makes me feel good. Yeah. Um, but I always make sure before I ask for Rex that they do have the time. So in, so in essence, like before I say, I do my Rex approach, I say, you know, you know, just, just to be, uh, so I said, I said that we'd definitely be done by, uh, by, uh, five fifteen. So just want to make sure you, you know, you're good till, till then. Right. And she's like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm good. I have till five fifteen, No problem. I go, perfect. And then I'll launch into the Rex approach. So she just says that she can't give me the, I don't have time because she just told me she has time. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, that's, that's, that's how I deal with that kind of problem. I like it. No, I, I think that's, that also, yeah, just helps overcome that objection before it happens of, hey, I, yeah, I don't have time to give you racks. It's like, well, you actually have 15 minutes. So we'll scroll through. Yeah, your right. And I, and I, yeah, and I love, you know, I really believe that, um, you know, I love what you say about coaching, you know, the idea of like, you know, uh, an objection, right? Our, part of our job is to, uh, you know, uh, handle objections and tell them, you know, why it's important or why it matters. And, you know, I always loved something, uh, you know, who's, uh, started selling Cutco in 1964 and still sells Cutco, uh, successfully. Wow. And, uh, he sold millions and millions. I mean, he's, he's semi-retired, uh, but he's, he sells like 50, 60 K a year or something, maybe even more. That's and, awesome. uh, I know. And he, and he, he said uh, two things that I think are of value here. Uh, one, he said that, uh, you know, he's been doing this for so long. And what's great about Cutco is that it's always useful and it's a recession proof product uh, yeah. because people are always going to be cooking. Family is always important. It is guaranteed forever. Uh, the other thing that he wants, hang on, I want to do that. Oh. Uh, <laughs> the other thing he, I don't know what just happened, but uh, have it, I do not disturb. The other thing that he once uh, said about objections is, he said, you know, maybe they came up a different side of the mountain. You know, they saw the clouds. They think it's going to rain, but you came up this side and you, you see the sun. So just, you know, show them the sun. And uh, I kind of, uh, so simple, but so, so eloquent. I like that. It's a good uh, I love that. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Okay, before we wrap up, uh, yeah. is there anything, and I love the way you handled the, the kind of not now objection, which is basically what that is. It's a smoke screen, you get them started, and then suddenly they're at, uh, you know, 15 people and they didn't think they had two. I always tell them, Mr. Yeah. Jones, if you give me one person for every letter of the alphabet, you know, you'll give me, you know, many more than I, you know, you'll, take my, you'll be a double Ooh. sponsor, right, in your world. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Glad you like it. Uh, so is there, any, before we wrap up, is there anything else uh, either on Rex or on uh, the phone demo uh, uh, that you uh, that you would uh, like to share that we haven't covered? Um, I'm looking right now. I think um, remembering that, like the mindset of the virtual, remembering that people buy everything online nowadays, right? Um, I think it's easy when you're a Cutco rep and especially those who are super used to doing lives only, that's what they've done their entire career, right? And now they're having to learn the virtual or switch to virtual in this coronavirus era, remembering that people buy everything online um, and it's obviously without trying it out first most of the time, right? Um, I'll be honest, I bought my mattress online um, all of my like hair products I currently use, I bought online. I mean, I buy, I buy almost everything online. I think our couch and our TV were the only two things I didn't buy online. And remembering that, that, um, the, the customer's used to this and the forever guarantee, right. And the 15 day trial, however you position it gives them the opportunity to try them out, see if they love them. They're obviously going to love them. Yeah. Um, if they're able to use them in person, but just know that, especially for the, the younger, newer reps who might think, oh my gosh, well, we're so used to being able to cut a tomato in front of them or cut the rope and the leather using their knives and then our knives to really show them the difference. Know that the customer, your HM3, your Mac customer is so used to buying most things online nowadays um, that it's, it's kind of a, it's a no-brainer for them. It's not anything different. Although it may be different for you as a rep, different experience, the customer is so used to it. So I think just having that mindset um, before switching over to virtuals, um, I've heard that a lot from current reps that they're like, oh my gosh, I've been doing lives for years and I've never done a virtual, right? I'm so nervous to do it. Remember, it's the same demo right? It's the same product at the end of the day. It's the exact same guarantee. It's just a slightly different experience. And you might, like I said, just bring your personality at 110% if you're normally at 100. Um, and you'll sell Cutco just fine. And as long as you're setting the expectation um, for Rex at the beginning, right? And you're coaching them through the process, you can get 10, 15, 20 Rex just as, just as, um, just as often I don't want to say just as easily because that because you do want to expect to be to coach them there, but you can get it just as often as you would on a live demo, um, on a virtual. So virtuals are they're fun, they're cool, and uh, it's I think this era is going to be a game changer for a lot of Cutco reps who maybe were a little nervous and uncomfortable to do virtuals before. And hey, even if we go through the next month and you switch to 100% virtual demos, service calls, et cetera, right? And then come May, June, you go back to doing live demos all day, every day, right? And maybe you don't need to do virtual for a long time. At least you got the practice and the experience and you know, now know how to maybe coach your reps or, or other reps how to do it too. So um, yeah, just those are my, my words of encouragement for team virtual. <laughs> absolutely that's awesome and i love the, the 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 context or the frame of of coaching your customers uh to something and coaching your customers to their head and coaching your customers to their kitchen and coaching your customers to the sponsorship or the double sponsorship i think that's that's so cool uh, and so great uh so awesome uh lindsay you have been incredibly generous with your time with your knowledge Thanks. Uh, you know, in the, oh yeah, thank you. In the world of, of Giver's Gain, uh, certainly I hope you, I know you have a lot of, lot of gifts, so you have a lot of gain coming to you. And uh, <laughs> they, they say that, uh, that every cloud has like a, a silver lining. So uh, personally, from my perspective, uh, if I can say one thing that I know has been uh, good about this, uh, 
challenging moment in history. Uh, it has been getting to, to know you a little bit, and I'm very glad oh, to have the opportunity. Appreciate that. Thank you so much for having me. Oh my gosh, this is awesome. You have an awesome backdrop for this too. Um, I feel bad that it's just been me and my balcony the whole time, but um, I really appreciate it. And and seriously, I think um, the, the theme for the next month or so is that we're all just coming together um, and we're forced to come together more, right? Because I think um, one really interesting thing I heard last week was this is, this is the first war that the globe is fighting together. And um, there's, I think, despite everything that's happening, there's a little bit of inspiration there. So I know, even though we've had social media for years now, I think I've been connecting with friends, family, coworkers more in the last week than I had in years with some of them. I think this is bringing everyone together. So um, I really appreciate you reaching out and uh, it's been awesome to get to know you too. And uh, I am, I'm always available to help um, for anybody who has my number, hit me up on my cell phone. Um, if you don't hit me up via email, it's at the end of my virtual manual, um, lindsayhatcher93 at gmail.com. And uh, yeah, even though I've, I, I will say I, I moved on from the Cutco or I don't want to say moved on because I still feel very much involved with Cutco with Jake being a CSP currently, but, um, and me doing things like this, but, um, I, I went, I started working with iHeart three or two years ago now. Um, it's been two years, but I'm still always very much happy to help the Cutco community and, uh, yeah, help out wherever I can. So I really appreciate you having me on this cool podcast show. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, Lindsay. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. And uh, you're a wonderful uh, cut columna. And uh, thanks again. Thanks so much. Thank you. <laughs>